Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Um, today we will try to solve a couple of very, very simple problems related to um, interaction between photons and matter. Well, as far as the matter is concerned, we will um, discuss only the simplest element, which is hydrogen. It's the simplest because it has only one um, electron. Okay, now this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on unizor.com. There is another course which is prerequisite for this one, which is Math for Teens. You definitely have to know math before you study physics on the level which we are trying to present right now here. Um, now the site is completely free. There are no advertisements, no strings attached. You don't have to even sign in unless you want to do something which is called like supervised um, studying. Then you have to have a supervisor, etc. Then everybody has to have a sign-in. Um, in any case, it's still free. Um, um, every lecture has notes on the website. Um, notes are basically like a textbook, which is part of the t a chapter of a textbook, which is dedicated exactly to what the lecture is about. So it's a lecture video presentation and next to it you have a textual part. Um, what else is important? Well, it is important to watch this lecture as far as, you see, this is part of the course, which means it's better to go through the whole course. Lectures are kind of related to each other. If you have found accidentally this lecture uh, through a search engine somewhere on YouTube, um, well, you definitely can watch whatever you want, but it makes more sense to watch it as part of the course, because there is a lecture before that, and material in that lecture will be used in, in this one. So it's all logically connected. There is a menu, a hierarchical menu. Um, you have So the course is divided into parts. This part, by the way, belongs to a uh, uh, part, it's called waves then the part is divided into chapters. This is the chapter about photons and matter. And within the chapter you have like few lectures, including certain problems, etc. Also, in many chapters you will find exams, and you can take them as many times as you want until you will get a perfect score. Okay, back to problems, simple problems. Okay. Um, we did discuss before that electrons are circulating somewhere around the nucleus in shells. Now, the contemporary view related to quantum uh, physics is that these shells can have only a fixed position relative to the uh, nucleus which means electrons which are circulating around these shells, within these shells around the nucleus, can have only fixed, discrete amounts of energy, potential energy. Well, whenever something is on a certain distance from something else, and there is a force between them, there is potential energy, obviously, right? So if you have, for instance, a uh, a stone which you have lifted from the surface of the earth, we do some work, and that work actually is transferred into potential energy of the stone. If we will let it go, it will fall down, the potential energy will convert into kinetic and then into uh, probably heat whenever it hits the, um, the surface of the earth. Same thing with protons and electrons. Protons are in a nucleus, uh, electrons are circulating around it, and there are certain fixed orbits or fixed shells actually within which electrons can exist. Now, this is basically part of the quantum physics. I'm not going into kind of a why it happens. M well, many people don't know why, <laughs> most people don't know why, but that's the fact. And um, there are certain you know, uh, calculations, experiments, etc., which confirms this thing. And what's the most important thing is that 
whenever electron is jumping from one uh, shell to another, its potential energy also jumps, either positively or negatively, depending on. So, if we, well, electron is attracted to proton in the nucleus, right? So, which means to um, move electron from a lower orbit to a higher energy orbit, we have to do some work, right? We have to separate them more, electron and proton, which means we have to do work. Now, if electron um, jumps down closer to the proton, it's not we who do the work, it's the electromagnetic uh, field, the attraction between proton and, and electron are doing work. So that's why we are saying that um, the energy of electron growing when it goes to a higher level or uh, diminishing whenever it goes to a lower level. When it's growing, it should absorb energy, absorb our work, whatever the work is. Most likely we are hitting the electron with photons, with light, with el electromagnetic radiation. Absorbing this radiation, electron moves to a higher orbit and higher um, energy potential. Um, now, energy potential, which uh, it's moving um, uh, higher, you see, all the energy which electron has is basically a, a negative energy because we have to do no work bringing from infinity where potential energy is by definition is equal to zero close to the nucleus because there is an attraction it's not we who should move it from infinity close to nucleus it's electromagnetic field does it so that's why uh, the energy is, is negative if we have to do something then the, neg the energy is, is, is basically growing. So, whenever we are moving from lower orbit to higher orbit, the energy is growing while still being negative. And the further we move, the closer to zero potential energy is, right? Because potential energy on, on, the, on infinity is equal to zero by definition, basically. Okay, so the energy is growing from um, m negative with a higher absolute value to a negative to a lower absolute value. So the energy is growing. Um, now, whenever electron moves back to the lower orbit, uh, then the energy should actually be released, right? Because a uh, certain amount of energy, electron becomes more negative, so a so certain amount of positive ne uh, energy like what? Like, for instance, electromagnetic radiation. Uh, or maybe we are hitting electrons so hard that it actually uh, kicked out from the, from the orbit and it has certain kinetic energy. So this is all transformation of energy. And what's important is that for this particular problem, uh, that energy uh, is basically uh, characterized by, by certain discrete value on certain orbits. The higher it is, the greater the energy is being negative. So when it's close to the nucleus, energy, let's say, minus 10, then energy is minus 9, minus 8, minus 7, etc., etc. Now, numbers are not whatever they are really. The real numbers, uh, at least in case of hydrogen atom, were actually according to certain formula. Now, this formula was suggested by, if I'm not mistaken, Niels Bohr, a very famous physicist, who basically made something which is called Bohr's model of the atom, which we will learn whenever we will talk about atoms. But meanwhile, what's most importantly is that the energy on the nth level, nth level being the um, shell number one, number two, number three, etc. They are discrete, so we are numbering them. It's proportional to one over n square. Now, in case we are talking about electron volts, uh, 
as energy uh, unit, which is kind of customary whenever we are talking about atomic dimensions. Electron volt is, this is basically an exact formula for hydrogen atom. So this is hydrogen. Other elements do not have this formula. Something much more complex, or I don't know right now. So we will use this formula to find out as the first problem what's the differences in energy levels uh, between different shells. And let's restrict ourselves to only four first shells. So here is my nucleus, and I will consider four shells around it. Three and four. So this is number four, this is number three, this is number two, and this is number one. So my first problem is, what's the difference in energy levels between um, these uh, levels? Well, that's actually very simple. The n equal to 1 is a ground, ground shell. So its energy equal E1, n is equal to 1, so it's 13.6 electron volts. Okay, now, what's the second? Well, thirteen, thir th uh, second is 13.6 divided by 2 square, divided by 4. For the third, it's 13.6 divided by 9, and for the fourth, it's 13.6 divided by 16 electron volts. So these are energy levels. So what's the difference between energy level? Well, I have a table, basically. I, J, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So what's the difference between energy levels? Well, between 1 and 1 is obviously 0, 2 and 2, 0, 3 and 3, 0, 4 and 4, 0. And then I just calculated how much is E1 minus E2. So that's the level um, of energy on the first shell, and this is the level on energy of the second shell. And the difference happens to be... Uh, okay, it's 10.20, and this is minus 10.20. So it's from 1 to 2, and this is from 2 to 1. Whenever we jump down, energy is increasing. <coughs> and uh, whenever we go up, uh, energy is... Uh, whenever we go up, energy is consumed. That's why it's positive. Whenever the energy... Whenever we go down, the energy is released, and that's why it's negative, right? So 2 is a more energetic level. Um, now this is O minus, by the way. I forgot to put it. We have agreed that whatever electron has, it's always negative potential energy. So that's why such a difference. Um, now what's next? Next is between uh, 3 and 1. So it's minus 12.09. So obviously from 3 to 1, the difference in energy is greater than from 2 to 1. So that's why we have it here, 13.009. What's next? The force is 12.71 minus 12.71, 75. And uh, this is 12.75. So between 1 and 2, as you see, the difference is significant. Between 2 and 3 is less. So what's between 2 and 3? 1.89. Significantly less, minus 1.89. Then 2.55 with a minus sign. 
and this is 2.55 and significantly less will be between uh, third and fourth. So the further we are, the closer to each other these shells become. Well, obviously, because the uh, denominator is increasing and the difference between these two obviously decreasing as well. So, and the difference is significant. So, this is not proportional. If I wanted to do it proportionally, it would be like this. This would be the first level, this would be the second level, and this would be the third level. So you see the difference is closer and closer, because the, de because the denominator is, gr is growing proportionally to, to, to n squared. So this is basically my first problem. I have determined the differences between the uh, energy levels of shells. Why do I need it? Well, I need it because whenever electron jumps from lower shell to a higher shell, it's supposed to consume certain work. It happens when we are bombarding electrons with photons. And whenever electron is releasing its extra energy, so electron becomes excited whenever it goes from the ground level, from the number one to number two, three, four, etc., it's excited. It has more energy than it usually is supposed to have whenever it's in a normal state on the ground level. Uh, then, electron, whenever it goes back to a normal, to a ground level, it releases the energy. And it releases exactly the same energy as there is a difference between the layers, between these shells. Exactly one of these values. So if it jumps, for instance, from uh, the third shell to the first one, it releases minus 12.09, um, it, it releases 12.09 electron volts of energy. Now, this energy is basically something like electromagnetic radiation, obviously. So it consumes electromagnetic radiation when it goes up the level, and it releases uh, the same amount of energy whenever it goes down. Energy is supposed to be conserved, right? Okay, and we have agreed that electrons are jumping from one level to another whenever it consumes certain amount of energy. Now, we were talking about the energy of electromagnetic radiation is delivered in chunks called quant, quanta or photons. And the amount of energy, according to Planck's formula, is Planck's constant times frequency. So frequency of electromagnetic oscillations really is the key to a minimum amount of energy this particular, this, this particular uh, oscillations, um, electromagnetic radiations, can deliver. So they're exchanging, uh, they're exchanging uh, energy between uh, electromagnetic radiation and electrons in these chunks. So the amount of one chunk, which is this, of the light, which bombards the electron, one chunk is consumed by electron, it cannot consume less, it consumes in chunks, so it consumes one chunk and it jumps to the next uh, uh, level of energy. When, when amount of energy in this chunk equals exactly to the difference between these two orbits as the electron uh, is going from and to. So whenever this amount is equal to one of these differences, then the electron, which has, let's say, it, it, it equals to 1.89 electron volts. One photon energy is equal to 1.89 electron volts. So whenever it happens, and this photon 
uh, hits the electron. Electron jumps from the uh, second to the third layer, if there are electrons on the second layer, obviously. So it all supposed to be in sync. The photons can hit and effectively move electron from one shell to a, another to a higher only when it exactly and energy exactly equals to one of these which means that the frequency is supposed to be one of these right now what happens when everything is reversed whenever electron because it's actually kind of bored to be on an, an excited level it decided to go back to normal well it releases exactly this amount of energy if it jumps from the third to the second from the third to the second, it releases 1.89 electron volts of energy. Now, this electron uh, volts of energy, 1.89, should correspond to some frequency of light. So that's ex so the frequency of light, which can be obtained from this number, so if E is equal to 1.89 electron volts, H is a known constant, that determines the frequency of light which is emitted. And this can be visible or not visible, whatever the radiation can be. All right? So that's very important. So my next problem is determine what exactly the frequency of light released when the electron <coughs> jumps down from a higher um, energy level to a lower. How can I determine it? Well, first of all, <coughs> To use this formula, I have to have everything in, 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 in compar comparable units of uh, measurement. So E is supposed to be in joules, H is known constant, uh, and, and F is uh, 1 over second, right? It's a frequency. So if E is joules, um, H must be a joule time second and then the F will be 1 over second, okay? That's what basically the balance of units is supposed to be. So we know the value of um, Planck's constant. It's a very big number, and I have it in my notes for this lecture, but approximately, approximately H is equal to 6.6 .6 and 10 minus 34 joule second. Now, electron volts. <coughs> how, how can I convert electron volts into joules? Well, electron volts is amount of energy which is uh, needed to move one electron from uh, one level to another with a difference in energy in, in basically in, uh, in, in the field uh, intensity uh, of one volt. Now we know that joule is one joule is one coulomb times one volt. Now we don't have coulomb, we have an electron and electron is supposed to be charge of electron is supposed to be converted into coulombs and then by multiplying by one volt we will get joules, right? So in coulombs my electron is E is equal to minus 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 colon. So I have this. And now I can calculate from electron volts. I will multiply electron volts by E. And that's my energy, whatever the energy is. Uh, expressed in coulombs. Multiply by one volt, by one, by, by one actually, and that gives me joules. So by multiplying this by this, or this or this or this or this, I know the levels, or multiplying one of these numbers by this, I will have the difference between levels. And dividing by H, which I also know, I will get certain numbers uh, which are the frequencies. 
So let me just give you the result of this. Okay, the results and frequencies are so I have two, three, four, one, two, three. From two to one, from two to one, it's minus ten point twenty. So if I will multiply it by uh, the charge of electron and divide by uh, Planck's constant, I will have twenty four sixty six. Now it's all multiplied by ten to the twelve. Now, the 3 to 1 would be greater, obviously, because it's a greater amount of energy. And 38 is 3. Okay. Then. From 2 to 2, no, that doesn't matter. From 3 to 2. 457 and 617 from fourth to uh, second and the third to third level I can jump only from the fourth and that will be 160 you see how big the difference, by the way, is between frequency of released light when it jumped from 4 to the first level, to the ground level, or from 4 to the third, which is right very close to the force. It basically illustrates that the difference between layers, first from ground to, to the next one is a big one, then a little smaller, 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 and the difference between layers becomes smaller and smaller. That's because of this formula, with n square and the denominator. So these are frequencies times 10 to the 12, by the way, um, of the light, which is emitted when electron jumps from this layer to this layer. So from 2 to 1, it's this. From 3 to 2, it's this, etc. Fine. So these are the frequencies times 10 to the 12. How to determine the wavelengths? Well, again, what is a wavelength? It's a distance which light with a speed c covers during the period. Well, period is the same thing as a, a, a reversed frequency, right? Time of one wave and how many waves per second, right? So they are reversed to each other. So it's C divided by F. So this is my lambda. This is the wavelength. Okay. So if I have wave, if I if I have the the frequency of the waves, uh, uh, that that's F, basically. How to calculate the wavelengths? I divide C, which is speed of light, which is approximately three to the ten to the eight meters. There is a more exact number, by the way, which is again in my notes. It's two nine nine, etc., etc. So I divide this speed of light into the frequency, and I will get the wavelengths. So what's the wavelengths? Here is the wavelengths. Uh, 122, 103, 97, 656, 486, and 1878. So, frequency was the highest whenever we moved to the first layer. The higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelengths. So 122 is a very short wavelength. When we go from 3 to 1, it's even more energy we released, which means that the frequency is supposed to be greater, which means the wavelengths should be uh, shorter, and the shortest one from the fourth level to the 1. 
but again to the second, which is much closer to the outside, uh, the frequency would be significantly less and the wavelengths would be significantly more. You see the difference here? And obviously the smallest difference between fourth and third layers, and that's why the frequency is the lowest and the wavelength is the largest. Now what are these wavelengths? And what's the unit? Now, unit is nanometers, which is 10 to the minus 9 of the meter. And question is, do we see these lights or not? Well, there is a spectrum of visible lights. Apparently, this one is um, red. This one is it's called cyan. I mean, there are many different spectrum of um, lights with names of the colors which are different because different people just see it differently but approximately this is the red and this is cyan um, basically the shortest which we see is um, the violet violet is let me put it here violet it's what it's 380 to 440 nanometers and the um, that's the shortest wave which we see nanometers and the longest which is red from red from 625 to 740 nanometers so in between you have uh, after violent you have in increasing wavelengths blue cyan green yellow orange and then red but these are obviously very much subjective uh, kind of opinions so don't take it too seriously different people might call colors differently from the physical standpoint it's just a gradual um, uh, change of the wavelengths and uh, again for in this particular case for a hydrogen atom from jumping, electron jumping from one shell to another these are basically the wavelengths which, which are um, these are visible these are uh, ultraviolet ultraviolet which we don't really see them they are much shorter and this is uh, infrared which again it's like a heat basically we don't really see it but we feel it with some other senses rather than eyes. Um, okay, so that's it. Uh, I do suggest you to read the notes because there are some more precise numbers and uh, may maybe I just put a little bit more explanation about how the energy is basically released when you are jumping, an electron is jumping from one layer to another. So these numbers are only for hydrogen atom. And this formula is only for hydrogen atom, the simplest one. More complicated, have a different story, and we might or might not, I'm not really sure myself, um, touch it when we will talk about atoms and their structure. But what's interesting is that there are distinct layers, distinct shells, with distinct um, energy level for, for every element, not only for hydrogen. And this is all related to um, quantum physics um, the whole the whole energy view is quantized nowadays and obviously it's related to this formula that the frequency times Planck's constant gives you the amount of energy carried by one photon so everything is divided one, one more little detail so these are kind of um, particle properties of the light uh, versus uh, wave properties. What's interesting is experiments actually show that particle properties of the light manifest themselves greater the shorter frequency is. I'm not right now going to basically go any further because uh, that, that, that's kind of a complicated story but you just have to understand that the longer waves, like radio waves, 
behaved like waves more and less as a particle. The shortest, like ultraviolet, for example, they really, we are talking about bombarding something, which is a term uh, obviously reserved for particle kind of thing. Corpuscular theory, remember from Newton time, he was the one who was basically explaining certain um, theories by uh, corpuscular model. Then we decided, not we, physicists decided to go more to the waves uh, and explained everything from the wave theory. And then came Planck and Einstein, <coughs> who started explanation of, uh, let's say, uh, Einstein explained the uh, uh, mm, the uh, emission of electrons after it's bombarded by, by, by light, photo emission, photoelectricity, he explained it from the particle standpoint, from the point, po po point of uh, photons, actually. Okay, that's it. Um, read the notes, um, and uh, there are no ex uh, well, uh, maybe there, there will be exams, I'm not really sure. Try to solve these problems yourself, by the way, um, and see if your numbers will correspond to the numbers in the notes. Notes c have, to this lecture, they have a correct numbers, so basically try to come up with your own, basically, exercise in arithmetic. It, it's just arithmetic, but, you know, have to do everything accurately and see if you have the same results. Thank you very much, and good luck.